The 8th generation of gaming brought us a lot of different things. Some awesome, some not so awesome. But one of the awesome things it did bring us is a little game called Red Dead Redemption 2. In today's video, I'm going to be doing something nobody's ever done before, which is trying to beat Red Dead Redemption 2 with only a shotgun. But before I do that, I would like to go over a couple of rules. Rule number one, I'm not allowed to kill or damage any enemies unless I use a shotgun or my fists. Rule number two, if I use anything other than a shotgun or my fists in a cutscene, it doesn't count since cutscenes are uncontrollable. But now that all of that's out of the way, let's get into the video. The game starts us off in the middle of nowhere with us trying to find some supplies for the rest of our gang. We eventually come across a house that seems to be occupied, so before we go to the house, me, Micah, and Dutch decide to make some welcoming gifts for them, but they end up hating them so much to the point of getting in a gunfight with us. It must have been the casserole. I didn't have any shotguns in this mission, so I had to use my fists. It actually wasn't that hard considering that they all had guns. After beating the rest of the angry gift receivers, we find a girl in the house named Sadie, so we decide to help her out by taking her with us. The next day, we found out that Como Driscoll, Dutch's arch nemesis basically, was hiding out not too far from us, so we decided that we were going to have a little chat with him. Once we got there, we scoped out the camp and saw Como Driscoll, but he left before we could get to him. So instead of having a little chat with Com, we decided to destroy his camp instead. Once we got down to the camp, we hid behind some walls and started waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I decided to take the lead since Arthur ain't no wuss. I decided to shoot the weakest looking ones first, which doesn't really make sense because they all look pretty much the same, but let's ignore that for now. After killing the rest of Combs' men, we decide to head back to camp, but on the way we come across one of his men, but instead of killing him, we decide to kidnap him for no real reason to be honest with you. In the morning, I decide to check up on some of the fellow gang members, when all of a sudden, Abigail starts telling me that her husband John Marston hasn't come back from searching for supplies, so me and Javier decide to go and look for him. After searching for a little while, we come across a spot that our horses can't cross, so we decide to go on foot. After looking a little more, we finally come across John, who doesn't look the best. As we were walking to our horses, I saw a pack of wolves, so I obviously decide to ask them to go away nicely. Just kidding. I blow all of their brains out, just as any sane person would. After we got John back to camp, Jose and Dutch told me about some train that was passing through here, so we decided to rob it. Once we got there, we jumped on top of the train and started making our way to the train conductor. Once I got there, I asked him if he could move, and he, uh, totally agreed. Anyways, after that I proceeded to stop the train. Once I got off the train, I noticed that there were like 20 guards just waiting outside for us, which was definitely very inconvenient and strange, since I don't recall there being any more guards on the train. But nonetheless, I took them all out pretty easily. After that, we blew the door off one of the train carts and found some very valuable bonds inside. We then proceeded to get away before more of the guards come along. Once we all got back to camp, we decided that it was time to set up our camp somewhere warmer, so we packed up all our stuff and headed to Horseshoe Overlook. Once we arrived at Horseshoe Overlook and set up our camp, Dutch told us that we need to start making money for the camp so we can keep ourselves afloat. So me and Jose had decided to rob a house. We surprisingly didn't wake up any homeowners, and we also found a stagecoach, so even better. After we sold the stagecoach, I met up with Javier, Trelawney, and Charles because one of our gang members, Sean McGuire, got captured by the police. We found out that they were transporting him to a place fairly close to us, so we decided to follow them until they came to a stop. Once they stopped, I got my binoculars out and spotted Sean, so we immediately started thinking on how we could save him. After thinking for a bit, we decided that Trelawney should distract them while me and Javier silently take them down. The plan worked for the first two guys, but then as we were trying it on the others, we got spotted, so we now had to change to plan B, which if you were wondering what plan B was, it's just to basically shoot our way to Sean. Very innovative, am I right? After shooting our way through the rest of the mountain, we finally reached where Sean was, and surprise surprise, there are even more police officers. Thankfully, there weren't as many police officers up here, so it wasn't too bad. After killing the rest of them, we were finally able to save Sean. The more the merrier. Later that day, me, John, Charles, and Sean found out about a train full of rich folk, so we obviously decided to rob it. The plan was simple. We put an oil tank right on the train track, so the train has to stop, unless the train conductor wants to die, of course. Thankfully, this train conductor didn't want to die, so he stopped the train. Once we got on the train, me and John started robbing all the passengers who were just all so cooperative with us. After a little while, I decided to check on Sean, which thankfully I did since he got jumped by a guard the literal second I checked on him. After I shot the guard who jumped Sean, some police officers heard the gunshot and decided to check it out. At first it seemed like only a couple of police officers, but oh boy was I wrong. 
There was only one way out of this situation, which is to obviously fight our way out. I killed them all with my freakishly long-range double-barreled shotgun until we could finally escape. The next day we decided to interrogate the O'Driscoll that we took hostage. He wasn't talking at first, so we decided to try some... other methods. After threatening him a little while longer, he finally told us where one of Combs camps were, so we decided to head over to it. Once I got there, they told me to take them out silently, but this is a shotgun-only run, so that's almost impossible. So instead, I decided to just go full battle royale mode on everybody until we were the last squad standing. After we took out the rest of the guys and got the victory royale, I found a house and decided to check it out. It had some money and valuables in it, so pretty cool. Later that day, me and John decided to take a break from all the action, so instead we decided to steal some sheep and sell them for some quick cash. Once we got to the location, John told me to scare away the people who owned the sheep with a sniper rifle. Now I'm not hitting anybody with a sniper rifle, so I'm not going to count it. The main goal of the challenge is to not shoot or kill anybody with anything other than a shotgun. After we scared them away, we went down and started leading all the sheep to the buyer's location. Once we got to the buyer's location and sold the sheep, John told me that Dutch was waiting for us at the saloon, so I made my way over there. As I was talking to Dutch, somebody called out his name. It was none other than Leviticus Cornwall. He was the owner of the train we robbed back in the Snowy Mountains. We saw that he had John and Strauss hostage and was going to kill them unless we surrender, so we had to think fast. Now, when I said we had to think fast, I didn't mean go into Deadeye mode until you shoot the guy holding John hostage. I tried waiting, which didn't work. I tried switching guns, which also didn't work. I tried multiple different things, but everything I tried just led me to John's death, so I had to shoot the guy. After saving John, I went full on Doomslayer with my shotgun and destroyed all the guys until there were none left. Chapter 3 starts with me, Dutch, and Josea going on a fishing trip. On the way, we come across Trelawney who got arrested and was being moved to a jail. As we were trying to get him out, one of the prisoners unlocked the gate and all of them escaped. We decided to help the sheriff and deputy get the prisoners back, because why not? So there we were, me and Deputy Archibald on an epic mission of cops and robbers. Once I got close enough, I jumped onto the train and made my way towards the prisoners. Once I got to the first prisoner, he challenged me to a fist fight, which was a huge mistake for him since Arthur is basically Batman compared to the average NPC in Red Dead Redemption 2. Once I reached the second guy, he pulled out a knife on me, which wasn't fair at all. He was also a little harder compared to the other guy, but I still managed to beat him with little to no scratches. I then picked up the prisoner and dropped him off at the sheriff's office, which in return they let Trelawney go. Later that day, we came back to the sheriff's office, and the sheriff liked us so much that he decided to let us become deputies, which Dutch agreed to for god knows what reason. Since we were deputies now, the sheriff gave us our first mission, which was to find some stolen moonshine. So me, Dutch, Bill, and Deputy Archibald made our way to the first clue, which was a broken stagecoach with two dead people on the side of it. After looking at the clues for a little bit, we finally figured out where the stolen moonshine was. So we quickly made our way over there. Once we got there, we noticed that there were some enemies, so me and Bill decided to take the left, while Dutch and Deputy Archibald took the right. Once we got a little closer, I saw an enemy, so I quickly took him out. After taking down another enemy, we decided that it was time to destroy the base, so I put down some dynamite and watched it blow. But as soon as the dynamite went off, a couple dozen enemies just came out of nowhere and started attacking us. It's kind of strange how we didn't notice them at first, like genuinely, where did they come from? Once we all met back at the wagon, me, Dutch, and Bill decided that it would be best if we took most of the moonshine. It's not like we're going to illegally sell the moonshine. It's not like we're criminals on the run who desperately need money. That would be a pretty silly thought. After that, I met up with Lenny at some old house because we heard that there were some enemies hiding there. Lenny told me to use a sniper rifle to kill the enemies, but we know I'm not able to do that, so instead I decided to take the obvious approach and kill them all with my shotgun. After that, we found a wagon full of explosives, so we decided to take it back to camp because you can never have too many of those, am I right? Once we got back to camp, Lenny gave me a rifle for helping him. Thanks, I guess? After that, I met up with Bill, Lenny, and Karen because they all wanted to talk to me about something. It turns out that they all wanted to rob the bank in Valentine because they heard that there's a ton of money inside of it. I agreed to help them because I had nothing else to do and Dutch also still needed more money in his bottomless pocket. Before we went, we all put on some cool outlaw clothes because if we were going to rob a bank, we might as well look cool doing it. Once we got there, we needed a way to get into the bank without anyone noticing, so we decided that Karen should play a lost little girl who needed help as a distraction. After Karen distracted everybody, we made our way inside the bank. When we got inside, I made my way to the teller and told him to open the vault. Don't worry, I made sure to ask him nicely. Once he opened the vault, I started packing all our bags with a ton of cash. After stealing all the cash the bank had to offer, we got out of there as fast as we could. Mission successful. Later that day, me and Sean were feeling a little devious, so we decided to burn down some random tobacco plantation. 
Once we got to the plantation, we needed to find a way to sneak in, so we decided that Sean will pretend to be a delivery guy bringing some supplies in while I hide in the back. As stupid as that plan sounded, it actually worked and we were able to get in. After Sean was done making all the Molotov cocktails, we grabbed some moonshine and started pouring it all over the tobacco fields. Once we poured moonshine over every tobacco field, we got our Molotovs out and started letting loose on the entire plantation like there was no tomorrow. A couple Molotovs later, we finally decided to stop, so we now had to figure out how to get out of here because the entire plantation was basically on our back now, which is reasonable since we just destroyed their entire line of profit. After wandering around for a bit, we found some horses, so we took them and basically got away with our devious plan scot-free- Uh, okay, let's try that again. So we took them and basically got away with our devious plan scot-free. Now that's more like it. The next day, I met up with Sean, Bill, and Micah because the sheriff wanted to talk to us about something. Not even a minute after I met up with them, Sean got shot in the head. The gig was up. They finally figured out who we were. It also turned out that the tobacco fields me and Sean burnt down for fun were actually owned by the sheriff's family, so that definitely did not help our case. Nonetheless, I took them all out and we lived another day. Well, most of us. As if this day wasn't already bad enough, once I got back to camp, we found out that Jack Marston got kidnapped. It turns out he got kidnapped by the Braithwaites, a huge family full of rich, corrupted inbreds. So we made our way to the Braithwaite mansion to see if Jack was there. When we arrived at the mansion, some Braithwaites came out and asked what we wanted. We told them that we wanted Jack back, but they said they didn't know what we were talking about. I was pretty mad that they all lied, so instead of asking again, we decided to start shooting, because that was the only logical thing to do in this situation. Once we killed them all, we went inside and started looking for Jack. Every room we looked in was either empty or had some wannabe cowboys inside. A little while later, we came across a room that had some enemies inside. The downside to this is that it forces me into Deadeye. I tried switching guns, I tried shooting around him, I tried about everything, but nothing worked, so I had to shoot at least one of the guys. Once we got past those guys, we came across an old lady. We asked her where Jack was, and she said he was in San Denis with a man named Angelo Bronte. To thank her for telling the truth, we decided to give her entire mansion the Up in Flames redesign. I know, I know, maybe I shouldn't have been so generous, but I just can't help it. Chapter 4 starts with us arriving in the not-so-beautiful city of San Denis, since we were told that Angelo Bronte is here. After looking around for a bit, we finally found Angelo Bronte's house. Once we went inside, we asked if he had Jack. He said he did and would even give him back to us if we do a small favor for him. The favor he had in mind was for us to head over to the local cemetery and stop some grave robbers. It sounded easy enough, so me and John made our way over to the cemetery. When we arrived at the cemetery, we started looking for the grave robbers. Eventually, we heard a noise that was coming from a big door, so we decided to open it, because what could possibly go wrong? Well, to no one's surprise, almost everything went wrong. It turned out that the entire thing was a trap so the grave robbers could kill us. They seriously have a cemetery full of bodies, yet they still want more. People these days, am I right? After killing the rest of the grave robbers, we decided to get out of there before the police showed up. Once we got back to Bronte, he kept his promise and gave us Jack. We also got invited to his fancy party, so even better. The next day, me, Bill, Dutch, and Hosea headed to the big party that Angelo Bronte was hosting. Once we arrived, we made our way to Angelo Bronte and asked him if there were any quote-unquote opportunities for us to take on. He got what we were trying to say, so he told us about some trolley station that supposedly had a lot of cash stored away. So just take a wild guess on what we did the following day. Yes, you guessed it. Me, Lenny, and Dutch decided to rob the trolley station. As we were robbing the trolley station, we started noticing that there was like barely any money here. I would be shocked if we could even afford a candy bar with the money we found. Tons of police officers also showed up out of nowhere, so we put the pieces together and figured out that Angelo Bronte must have set us up. As much as we would have loved to keep on talking about how terrible Angelo Bronte was, we kinda had an issue with the police, so we decided to get on the trolley and try to escape. The next part had me shooting cops away from the trolley, and guess what? It didn't let me switch to my shotgun, so I just had to shoot nothing for about two minutes until the trolley finally crashed. I kinda said that like it was a good thing, which it wasn't, since now we were being swarmed by dozens of cops, but on the other hand, it kinda was, since I can now use my shotgun. After taking out a couple more cops, Dutch decided that the best course of action would be to run down the streets of San Denis with no cover. For somebody who always has a plan, I expected better, but nonetheless we went along with it, or at least tried to, because a little while later I ran out of shotgun ammo. So I had to use my fist, which surprisingly didn't go as bad as I thought it would. Well, that was until Dutch died, of course, but the good news about that was that I spawned with more shotgun ammo, so pretty cool. 
After running around a bit more, we found a wagon, so we decided to ride it until we finally got out of Saint Denis. Also, if you were wondering on how much money we got, well, I'll let Arthur answer that for you. Um, we each got $15. Oh, and a quarter. Don't forget the quarter. The next day, we decided to do the exact same thing we did yesterday, but this time we did it with style. Once we got in the boat, I sat down and decided to cheat- I, I mean play some poker. After winning a couple of poker games fair and square, one of the people I beat got mad and put his watch on the line, so I accepted. And what do you know? I won. It must be my lucky day. His watch was located upstairs, so one of the employees of the boat and a very familiar guard took me upstairs so I could get it. Once we arrived upstairs, I pushed the employee to the ground and started looking in the safe, when all of a sudden he pulled a gun on me, which also put me into yet another deadeye mode that I can't get out of. I tried a lot of different things, but nothing worked, so I had to shoot him. After taking all the valuables from the safe, we headed back downstairs, and to no one's surprise, the guards found out about us robbing the safe. This would be all fine and dandy if I had a shotgun with me, but I did not, so I had to use my fists, which unlike last time, this time was not so easy. If I told you the amount of times I died on this one part, you'd probably laugh, but just like everything else in this challenge, I eventually got past it. All we had to do now was jump off the boat and swim away. Mission successful. The next day, we all decided to give our friend Angelo Bronte a visit since he kinda set us up for disaster at that trolley station. When we finally arrived at his house, we decided that it'd be best to sneak in. Just kidding, we actually decided to go guns blazing until there were no survivors left. Once we reached Angelo Bronte, I grabbed him and took him to our boat. As we were row row rowing our boat back to camp, Angelo Bronte started telling us how the cops would be after us and how we'd all die, so Dutch decided that the best course of action would be to drown him. That was definitely a different plan than I was expecting, but whatever, we'll go with it. A couple days later, me, Hosea, and Dutch started planning a heist. The bank we would be hitting was none other than the Sand Denis Bank, which probably wasn't the best bank to pick looking at our circumstances, but it had a ton of money, so we decided to do it anyway. Big heists like this call for fancy apparel, so we all got dressed up and made our way towards the bank. As we were robbing the bank, somebody called our name. It was none other than the agency. They had Hosea hostage, so we told them to let him go, and they did, but then they killed him like five seconds later. We obviously weren't gonna let Hosea's death slide, so we started shooting at them. One epic kill montage later, Dutch told me to blow open a wall since we needed a way to escape. Once I blew open the wall, we all made our way up to the roof and started running for our dear lives. But just as we were doing that, Lenny got shot. Two deaths in the same day? Now that's just not fair. After doing a couple of insane parkour moves, we found some shelter that the agency couldn't find us in. A couple hours later, we decided that it was about time to escape. We had to be extra sneaky since the agency was still on full alert, but we eventually got past them. We also found a boat that was about to leave Saint Denis, so we all snuck onto it. Everything was finally starting to go our way. There's just nothing that could possibly go wrong. Well, that was until a storm hit us and started sinking the entire ship. I had no choice but to jump off the ship and pray that I don't die. Chapter 5 starts with us waking up on some random island. After walking around for a bit, I eventually found the others. It turns out that we were on the island of Guarma. Just as Dutch was about to tell me some more details, some Guarma police officers came up to us and put us in shackles. Out of nowhere, some random people started shooting at the officers, so we took this as an opportunity to escape. Once we escaped, we started following the people who saved us when all of a sudden Javier got shot in the leg. We couldn't get to him in time, so we told him that we'd come back for him. Before we could do that though, we had to fend off some more of the officers. The only issue with this was that I didn't have a shotgun on me, so I had to use my fists, and oh boy was it tough. Many, many tries later, we finally got them all and decided to get out of there before more showed up. Before we saved Javier, I made sure to grab a shotgun so I wouldn't have to go through all that pain and torture again. Thankfully, I grabbed that shotgun because if I didn't, saving Javier would probably be a huge pain in the butt, especially this last part where you kinda have to use guns. The next day, we decided that it was about time to get off this island, but before we could do that, the government of Guarma sent a ton of soldiers and a warship to kill us. I mean, come on, we're literally just a couple of dudes and you need a warship to deal with us? Now, I would normally count this as getting a kill without a shotgun, but I'm technically not hitting anybody, and I also don't know how many people are in the warship, so I couldn't add it to the count even if I wanted to. After that, we found a boat that would have been totally perfect if it also had a captain. We found out that the captain of this boat was being held hostage, so we decided to save him. Now, when I started this mission, I really thought that I was still gonna have my shotgun to use, but good ol' Rockstar decided to do a funny little joke by removing my shotgun for no reason at all. So I yet again had to use my fist. This time it wasn't as bad, which I'm so thankful for, since last time I had to use my fist, it was literal torture. 
Once we reached the captain, we told him to follow us as we blasted, or in my case, meleeed every enemy that stood in our way. That was until I came across a point where I had to shoot a guy in a tower with a cannon. There was no other way around it, trust me, I tried, so I had to shoot him. After that, we said our goodbyes to the people of Guarma and then sailed back home. Once we arrived back home, the agency found out where we were and decided to give us a welcome gift which consisted of about a thousand bullets all directed towards us. They're so sweet. So we decided to return the gift to them since we couldn't let them leave empty handed. That would just be rude. As we were returning our gift to them, Sadie told me to get on a Gatling gun, which I obviously couldn't, but don't worry, I didn't really need to use it anyway since these guys like running to their inevitable doom instead of just using cover. After that encounter, we needed to find a new camp, so me and Charles made our way to a place called Beaver Hollow. After taking out some cannibalistic hobos, we set up our camp and officially started Chapter 6. As I was strolling through Saint Denis, Arthur got a mean cough, so I made my way to the doctor and it turns out that Arthur got tuberculosis. Thankfully, it's not as bad as lumbago, but it's still a terrible sickness that'll eventually lead to Arthur's demise. After that not-so-great news, I met up with Sadie because John got arrested and we obviously needed to save him. He was currently being held on the Red Dead Redemption 2 equivalent of Alcatraz, which is why we were getting there by boat. Once we got there, we snuck up to a tower so we could scope out the area and hopefully find John. It turns out though that John wasn't working today, so we took a cop hostage and made our way to the prison. Once we got there, we told them to give us John or else we'd make the cop we took hostage play the entirety of the Saints Row reboot. They were obviously shocked that we'd even consider doing something like that, so they gave us John. After that, we speed ran to our boat and successfully saved John. Remember Leviticus Cornwall? Yeah, well Dutch and Micah wanted to do a quote unquote deal with him. Listen, I'm in a gang with Dutch and even I can agree that his deal was a little too hefty, so Leviticus Cornwall laughed and obviously said no, which he shouldn't have done because Dutch decided to shoot him not even a second later. I mean, come on, we all saw this coming. There was just no way that Dutch was going to let him live. Now whether you agree with that or not, we can all definitely agree that Dutch basically caused a mini world war when he shot Leviticus Cornwall. Seriously, the amount of people that just spawned out of nowhere and started shooting at us was almost unreal, but we were eventually able to get out of there. The next day, we all found out that Como Driscoll was being hung. Now the thing about Como Driscoll is that he's always about to be hung, but his henchmen always get him out before anything happens. So our goal today is to make sure that his henchmen don't get him out. The plan was simple, we'd all dress up differently so they wouldn't know who we were. I then made my way up to the roof since there was a sniper at the top. When I got up there, the game immediately put me into combat. This wouldn't be an issue if it let me switch to my fists, but it didn't. I tried about everything to avoid this, but nothing worked, so I had to kill him. After that, I had to make sure that Como Driscoll hung without any issues. Once the inevitable happened, Sadie started going on a killing spree which caused us to get into a massive gunfight. Now the issue with this is that I was stuck to the sniper rifle, so I just tried shooting nothing, but as I was doing that I noticed that one of the guys was literally invincible. Like Sadie and Dutch were shooting him and he just wouldn't die, causing me to rack up yet another point on the kills without a shotgun counter. This next mission had me and Sadie taking out the last of the O'Driscolls. Thankfully, there were no sniper rifles or knives that you can't unequip, so it was pretty simple. Kill a guy here, kill a guy there, you know, the usual. The following day, Dutch told me about some train coming through San Denis and how we should rob it. It seemed fairly simple, so we made our way to the train. Once I got close to the train, I jumped onto it and started making my way towards the vault. After powering through all the guards on the train, I came across a point where I needed to use a Gatling gun, but don't worry, I didn't actually have to shoot anyone, so I just shot nothing until it finally let me get off of it. Once we got into the vault, we started stealing the money. When we thought we had enough, we jumped off the train and headed back to camp. The next mission had me and Sadie saving Abigail from the agency. The issue with this mission is that just like many others in this chapter, it makes me use a sniper rifle. I tried shooting around the enemies again, which worked, until Sadie eventually died. And trust me, this was not just some one-time occurrence. I had to shoot at least one of the enemies, which means yet another number added to the kills without a shotgun counter. It must be my lucky day. Once I went into the building, I started freeing Abigail when all of a sudden Agent Milton pointed a gun at me. It turns out that Micah was giving the agency information the entire time. Micah looks like a rat, acts like a rat, and is about as useless as a rat. He must be pretty devoted to the role. As he was distracted, Abigail was able to get out of the chair and shoot him. After that, we all ran to our horses and headed back to camp. Once I got back to camp, I confronted Micah about being a rat. He obviously denied it since, you know, he's a rat. And Dutch believed him for god knows what reason. We all picked our sides, but before anything exciting could happen, the police showed up at our camp, so me and John had to make a run for it. As me and John were running up a mountain, I told him that I'd cover for him and that he should go before it's too late. He obviously didn't want to leave me, but I eventually convinced him. As I was covering for John, Micah came up from behind me and tackled me down a mountain. We then proceeded to have one of the most epic fistfights I've ever seen in my life. No biggie. 
Just remember, Arthur is super sick right now and he's still pretty much destroying Micah. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. After fighting for a while, I tried grabbing a gun, which I would have gotten if it wasn't for Dutch. Seriously, I've known this man for like 25 years and he betrays me for this guy? That's just sad. After that, Micah decides to shoot me, which officially marks the end of this playthrough. So back to the question of the video. Can you beat Red Dead Redemption 2 with only a shotgun? No, you can't, but you can get pretty close. But anyways guys, if you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like. And if you haven't already and you like my content, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.